transaction, right? But uh, now, gentlemen, would you please remove your caps? Due to some technical difficulties, we'll be saying the pledge tonight. So here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to its republic, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
run, one hit, no errors by the Zebras, and one, one, one runner left on base. Leading off for the Zebras in the bottom half of the first will be shortstop Brady Coleman. Welcome to Varsity Baseball. Action here at Bob Copeland Field in Rochester. Today the Northfield Norsemen are taking on the Rochester Zebras. Starting a little late today due to some technical difficulties. We have no score in the bottom of the first inning and Brady Coleman is leading off against Ty Lemming of Northfield. Coleman will be followed by Carson Pollock and Tanner Reinerts. Again, no score here in the bottom of the first. Got him looking. Northfield comes in with a record of 5 and 3 and they are 0 and 1 in TRC play. Rochester's 8 and 3 overall. They are 1 and 0 in the TRC. Rochester's won 13 consecutive TRC games. They have not lost a TRC game since May of 2022. And Northfield on a tough spot. They know they can't lose this and fall to 0 and 2 in the conference. So they do that. Their chances of a conference title will be pretty much in flames early. 1 and 0 that count to Carson Pollock. Sophomore pitcher strike. Cameron Pratt let off the game for Northfield with a double to left field on a nice two strike piece of hitting. Uh, Booker grounded to short. McKillop, wide Booker grounded to short, the runner holding. Brandon McKillop grounded a third of the runner holding with Tanner Reinerts making a nice play to his left throwing him out at third base and then uh, Pratt eventually advanced to third on a wild pitch but Paul struck out Caleb Dubois swinging on a breaking ball to end the inning. So no runs, one hit, no errors, one left in the top of the first for Northfield. And you just saw Coleman strike out looking to lead off the game for Rochester. Now the count is 2-2 two and two on Carson Pollock. I'm Val Sitsuris. Uh, Caleb Wilson is our producer today. Ball three in the dirt. Steve Stricker is covering the West Central cast and softball game down in Fulton. Certainly, if you'd like to go watch that one, we, we wouldn't mind at all. Uh, all within the same family here. Base on balls. Pollock's on with one out. Cast and softball coming off a third-place finish of that Kokomo tournament. 
on Saturday that lost to South Bend St. Joe 19 to three in five innings in the semifinals, but then came back and beat Kokomo 10 to nine in the third place game. Tanner Reinerts will bat for Rochester. He's the junior third baseman. Batting with the runner on and one out. Ooh, that hit him and that hurt. Looks like it hit him in the small of the back. Yeah, that hurts. Yeah, you know, these high school kids, you, no matter how hard you get hit, it's rub some dirt on it, but boy, that hurts. And he's still in pain. Did that did that hit him in like the elbow? Or wh where did that hit him? The left elbow. Yeah, it hit him in the elbow. Yeah, I thought it hit him in the back cuz he turned to it, but hit him in the elbow. As a team, Northfield as a team has 75 strikeouts in 45 innings. Lemming has 18 strikeouts in 10 innings. And their other fireballer is Brandon McKillop, their center fielder. He, he's got 37 strikeouts already. Jake Seifer, the batter, the prom king. Strike. What you and Corey talk about? Zebra started the year three and three. They have won five in a row since, including that ten to two one over North or, or ten to two one over Pioneer here on Thursday. Mentioned they are one and zero in the conference. They beat Southwood six to one here last Wednesday, scoring five in the bottom of the sixth to break a one one tie. Zebras beat Northfield by 10 run rule last year in Wabash County. Again, Rochester gets all four Wabash County teams at home this year. They played them all four of them on the road last year. Let's get McConaughey at home this year. So basically the five longest road trips in the conference are not on the road. Just high. Two and one the count. We also have a camera at the Northfield Rochester softball game over at Fansler Field. Throw back. Say Booker was hanging out there as Pollock tried to get a lead. The right side of the Northfield the right side of the Northfield infield consists of freshmen, Wyatt Booker at second base, and Caleb Dubois at first base. And that is a hit by pitch. Bases loaded, one out. And that will bring up the senior second baseman, Gavin Young. Coach out to talk to Lemming. Joseph Mitchell, the head coach for Northfield. His assistants are Braden Ripplinger, Matt Burkhart, Nate Hemberer, Sam Burcroft, Remington Mons, Micah Higgins, John Higgins, and Kevin Lemming. Northfield comes in five and three. They lost their opener at Valley back on March 25th. Then they won three in a row. They split a double header with a good Eastern team on April 13th. Strike. They improved to five and two when they won at Eastbrook on April 16th, but then lost their conference opener at Wabash on Wednesday. Lost five to two. 0 and one the count to Gavin Young. Now he's down in the count 0 and two. In Northfield, opening with three in a row on the road in conference. They were at Wabash last Wednesday. 
here today and then at Peru on Wednesday. 0-2. Popped up. Infield fly. Booker makes the catch. Runners hold. So whatever Coach Mitchell, if that was uh, – we're not sure that was Coach Mitchell, but whoever said it, whatever Coach came out there and said something to Lemming, it calmed him down because he got a tough hitter and Young and a pop-up to second base. Now the bases are loaded with two out for Colton Fervita. Line drive left center field. Going back on it and making the catch is McKellop. McKellop had that one measure pretty good, got a pretty good jump and made a backhanded catch to retire the side. So Ferv puts the first pitch in play, but is retired. For Rochester in the bottom of the first, no runs, no hits, no errors, three left. End of one inning here at Bob Copeland Field. No score between Northfield and Rochester, and you're watching RTC TV4. How, uh, how many total hits? They got one. Uh, they got one, and we've got trying to get that call back. Yeah. Eight, 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 eight. Tomorrow, right? JV is here tomorrow? I do not know that. Back for the top of the second, it'll be Corbin Hopper. Jared Holmes and Ty Lemming do for Northfield on the top of the second against Carson Pollock. Again, the lineup for Northfield. Cameron Pratt, White, Booker, and Brandon McKell up the top three. Caleb Du Bois, Corbin Hoppert, and Jared Holmes the middle three. Lemming, Maddox Daniels, and Jaden Bear the bottom three. Neither team using a DH tonight. Ground ball in the hole. Base hit. Corbin Hoppert leads off the top of the second with a single. Just a well-placed grounder, and Northfield has their leadoff man on for the second straight inning. Catcher. Let will bring up the catcher, Jared Holmes. Holmes wearing number 24. He's a junior. Let's see if he's up there to bunt. He is. Puts it in play. Pollock's going to throw to second. Out. Young over there to cover. Fielder's choice, 1-4. And no sacrifice for Holmes. And we'll bring up the sophomore pitcher, Ty Lemming. Now hitting pitcher, Ty Lemming. Lemming, a 200 hitter on the year. He is four for 20. But he does have six RBIs. The more RBIs than hits, you're, you're making the most of your hits. Lemming ahead in the count here, 1 0. Oh. Fall off. Well, there's one TRC school that had to bump up a level in baseball due to the success factor since the inception of the success factor. And you're watching them in this game, and it's not the Zebras, it's Northfield. In fact, when Northfield bumped up, they were in 2A. They made two straight state championship games, winning one of them. And they actually played it for a couple of years in Class 3A. Now back down to 1A, 2-1. and one. Put in the air. Center field, Casper makes a shoestring catch. Lemming is the second out of the inning. Now batting for the North, third baseman, Maddox Daniels. I mean, that was, again, I think you get an idea of how the wind's blowing here. Was, temperatures in the mid-60s today. Sunny for the most part, but a little windier than maybe a would have guessed. First pitch is high. It's supposed to be a little soggy tomorrow. Then nice again on Wednesday. Zebras host Manchester on Wednesday. One and zero. Oh. Strike. Hot 
How many high school baseball players have the name Maddox? I'm just throwing that out there. I, I, I imagine it seems like there are quite a few. This Maddox Daniels is 0 for 8. So I'm, you, you think the, you know, the uh, parents grew up watching Cubs games in the 90s. They're about of that age or watch baseball in the 90s and early 2000s. They watch Greg Maddox and. How many were inspired to name their kid Maddox? Or maybe there's another story behind Mr. Daniel's first name here. Got him swinging in a high fastball to retire the side. So again, Northfield gets the leadoff man on base. And again, Pollock gets the next three batters out. He has two strikeouts. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left. At the end of an inning and a half, no score between Rochester and Northfield. And you're watching RTC TV4. And Brant Beck coming off a very successful pitching outing against... Pioneer puts the first pitch in play. That's a fly ball to shallow center field. That won't be easy. Nice play by McKellop. Well, it's fair to say Northfield's got a sure-handed center fielder. He's made two nice plays. Now batting B squared, Brady Beck. That will bring it Brady Beck. Brady is one for three. Or he went one for three against Pioneer last game, and he scored two runs. Swing and a miss to breaking ball. Just inside. Hit him with a pitch. When a pitch hits Brady, you, you, you're more worried about the ball than Brady. The ball might be injured. Center field, Parker Casper. That'll bring up the freshman center fielder, Parker Casper. Low. Pitch by Lemming. High ball two. So two and oh, I don't part Casper hasn't shown bun. And with one out, I, I don't think he's up there to bun. I think he's up there to swing away. He runs pretty well, so he's not a big double play threat. Ground ball to third. Bobbled for a moment. Throw to first. Out. Brady Beck advances to second on the play. So Maddox Daniels kind of knocked it down. It kind of took a little bit of a funny hop. But he was able to knock it down and keep it in front of him, and he was able to gun Casper out, but... It didn't take that room service hop, so no chance to double play. Now Brady Coleman's up to shallow right field. That might drop. It does. And a run will score. Coleman in at second with an RBI double. A perfectly placed bloop double to right field by Brady Coleman, and Rochester leads one to nothing. Pollock. Nice effort by Hopper at the right fielder. He made a diving effort and just couldn't quite get there. And Coleman, he was thinking two bases all the way. Now he's in scoring position for Pollock. Pollock walked his first time up. Line drive, base hit, left center field. Rounding third is Coleman. He's going to try. He'll score easily. Some clutch hitting for the Zebras here in the bottom of the second. Two out RBI single for Pollock follows the double by Coleman. Zebras now lead two to nothing. Third baseman, Tanner Reinhardt. 
And it'll bring up Tanner Reinerts. Tanner was hit by a pitch his first time up. Might see it. Let's see if Pollock is running here. Let's see what kind of throwing arm Jared Holmes might have. First pitch breaking ball in there. So Coleman, Coleman's double came on the first pitch, and I think what Pollock's base hit came on the first pitch. Zebra's having some decent success swinging early in the count. Again, Corey Good talks about approach so much that I can't imagine they're just swinging at the first pitch. It's just some sort of accident. I imagine this part maybe was in the game plan. Rope to deep left center field. McKillop makes the catch. Just a couple feet in front of the fence. Nice catch again by McKillop. But Rochester scores two runs in the inning on a two hits. No errors and one left. At the end of two innings, it's Rochester 2 and Northfield 0, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Think third baseman won an MVP. Later played for the Yankees, later played for the Twins, later played for the Braves. He was actually a Cub. He was actually with the Cubs at the start of his career. He was a catcher, and the Cubs traded him to the A's for Rich Harden, and he later became a star third baseman, 0-1. He never actually played for the Cubs. He was a prospect with the Cubs. Ground ball to short, charging. Nice play by Coleman. And Jaden Bear is retired to start the top of the third. Bear will be followed by Cameron Pratt and Wyatt Booker. Now hitting for the Northman, leadoff hitter Cameron Pratt. Cameron Pratt doubled his first time up. Cameron, the junior right fielder. Played for the A's, played for the Blue Jays, won an MVP award. Started, a, he's the number one answer in Immaculate Grid for A's and Blue Jays, but he also he just retired. He played for the, uh, played I think some time for the Twins, the Yankees, the Brewers, the Braves. He kind of bounced around a little bit at the end of his career, but he was still a good player. That got a piece of Jake Cipher that knocked his glove off. Boy, Jake has seemed impervious to pain. You guys want to venture a guess? Josh Donaldson at 20%. Mm -hmm. A's and Diamondbacks. A's and Diamondbacks. This is a tough one. He, he became a TV announcer after his career was over, so maybe you know him from that. He was an outfielder. Got him swinging. Pratt the second out here in the top of the third. Strike number three for Pollock. That'll bring up Wyatt Booker, the freshman second baseman. Booker grounded to short his first time up. He's kind of a kind of a goofy guy. He's kind of a funny guy. He's on MLB Network quite a bit. Swing and a miss by Booker. A's, A's and Diamondbacks. What's the number one answer in Immaculate Grid? Ball, one and one. Outfielder, left left fielder primarily. Rounder to third, nice pick by Reinert's bad throw, wild throw. They'll have to chase near the fence, but Booker is going to hold on at first base. E5, and that keeps the inning alive for McKillop. That had some side spin on it, but still, I you're surprised when Tanner's throw is offline, but he airmailed that one. Runner at first with two outs for Brandon McKillop. In the dirt, nice dig by Cypher. Fouled off. One and one. 
A's and Diamondbacks. Outfielder. Name number one answer on Immaculate Grid today. Uh, let's see. Outfielder. He was an announcer. I think he might have had a 30. I think in a 2020 season. I don't think he had a 30 30 season. But kind of a nice combination of power and speed. Um, blonde. Kind of had stringy blonde hair. Eric Burns. A's and catcher. A's and played a minimum of one game at catcher for the A's. What's the number one answer in Immaculate Grid? Ball. Two and two, the count to McKillop, who grounded to third his first time up. McKillop a senior. Just inside. Jammed him, foul out of play. For A's and catcher, the hint is he played for the A's in the late 80s with the Canseco and McGuire. Carney Lansford was on that team. Three and two. Grounder, not hit hard. Charging. Reinerts throws, safe, infield single. All of a sudden, first and second with two outs, and now Caleb Dubois will bat. So that's Northfield's third hit. It was a good pitch by Pollock, but bad luck. Kind of that swinging bun and was able to beat it out. Ball? Want to know? I believe this guy had a home run in the 1988 All-Star Game in Cincinnati. A's and catcher. Number one answer. Ball two. Swing and a miss, foul tip held onto by Cypher, so two and one. Big pitch, had to challenge the freshman. Du Bois took a big swing, almost fell down, he swung so hard. Two and one. Ball three. No walks, three K so far for Pollock. Base on balls, they're loaded. First walk for Pollock, and that'll bring up Corbin Hopper, who singled his first time up. Left fielder, Corbin Hopper. As a team, Northfield has struck out 60 times in eight games coming in. And they've struck out three times in two and two-thirds innings so far against Pollock tonight. Strike. Fervida, Casper, and Brandt back in the outfield from left to right for Rochester. Liner to right, and that'll drop for a base hit. One run is in. Here comes another run trying to score. The throw by Brand Beck is not going to get there. McKilla, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, uh, two boys is going to go to third. A game tying, two out, two run single by Corbin Hoppert, and we are tied two to two. Now hitting for the Norseman, catcher Jared Holt. Um, Brand Beck made a throw to the plate thinking he could get his man, but he didn't really have a chance, not with two outs. And fortunately, Hoppert's still at first. Du Bois was going to go first to third on that pretty much no matter what. 
Count is 0-1 on Jared Holmes, who grounded into a force out his first time. Swing and a miss. Both of these runs unearned because of an error. It all started with nobody on and two out. <laughs> there goes the runner. Throw down into center field. That's an error, and another run will come in and score. Hopper trying for third. He's safe. Stolen base and an E2. The run scores in the air, so... Northfield has their first lead at 3-2. to two. One and two is the count to Jared Holmes. Got him swinging to retire the side. But a damaging inning for the Zebras. Strike number four for Pollock. But Northfield scores three runs in the inning. Two hits, two errors, one left. At the end of two and a half innings, it's Northfield 3 and Rochester 2, and you're watching RTC TV 4. We're also playing Immaculate Grid A's and Catcher. What's the number one answer in Immaculate Grid? Played in the 80s, early 90s for the A's. Going, going. No. Strike called to Cypher. Terry Steinbach. Terry Steinbach, the number one answer. Next category, Red Sox and Blue Jays. This should be an easy one. He won over 300 games. I think, I think the Phillies just called up his son to play in the big leagues. All of his, son, all of his sons have, the, uh, have, the, have a first name that begins with the letter K. Um, a fireballing right-hander pitch for the Red Sox and the Blue Jays and later pitch for the Yankees and the Astros. Two and one, the count to Cipher. Had two games with 20 strikeouts. One of the elite pitchers of his generation. But his career clouded in controversy. Two and two. Played his college baseball at the University of Texas. He was a Longhorn. All of his sons have a first name that begins with the letter K. Pitched well into his 40s. Three and two. Got him swinging. Home plate umpire appealed to the base umpire, and he said he did go around. No argument from Cypher. Second baseman, Gavin Young. Strikeout number two for Lemming, and that'll bring up Gavin Young, who popped a second his first time up. Very famous pitcher. Pitched for the Red Sox, pitched for the Blue Jays. Line drive to left, that'll drop for a base hit. An intense competitor on the mound. Any guesses? Now hitting. Left fielder, also number seven, Colton Fervida. Colton Fervida, the batter. Fervida flew out to center his first time. <laughs> Guys? Red Sox and Blue Jays, number one answer in Immaculate Grid. He played his college baseball at the University of Texas and later played for the Astros. Strike, one and one. Strike two.
Ball two and two. Red Sox and Blue Jays. Number one answer on Immaculate Grid. I'll give you one more pitch, guys. Come on. Come on, guys. Fouled off. Roger Clemens. Roger Clemens. Red Sox and Diamondbacks. This is an even easier one. Bloody Sock. Pitcher. Red Sox and Diamondbacks. Won a World Series with the Diamondbacks. Just foul. Grounder down the line. He was a broadcaster for ESPN for a while. He's got uh, he pitched in the World Series for the Phillies as well. Red Sox and Diamondbacks. Right-handed pitcher. Won over 200 games in his career. A tremendous postseason pitcher. Two and two. Ball three. Breaking ball. First name starts with C. Three and two to Fervida. He and Randy Johnson were the one-two combo with the Diamondbacks when they won the World Series. Bloody sock for the Red Sox when they made that comeback against the Yankees in 2004. Got him swinging with a breaking ball. And stealing second is Young. So Young was on the move on three and two. And Holmes didn't even venture a throw. So strikeout number three for Lemming. Two outs in the inning. But now Brant Beck gets to hit with a man in scoring position. Brant flew out to center his first time. Strike. And Red Sox and Diamondbacks. What's the number one answer on Immaculate Grid today? Pitcher. Won World Series with both teams. Hi. A great clutch pitcher. Then uh, had a broadcasting career with ESPN for a while. Did Sunday Night Baseball. One and two to count. Got him swinging. Did not catch it cleanly. The catcher didn't, Holmes didn't catch it cleanly, but it does throw to first to complete the strikeout and retire the side. Strikeout number four. Rochester in the bottom of the third. No runs, one hit. No errors and one left. At the end of three innings, it's Northfield three and Rochester two. You're watching RTC TV four. We're, we're not moving at as fast a pace as I would like. Red Sox and Diamondbacks, what's the number one answer, guys? Bloody Sock. Strike call. Kurt Schilling. Kurt Schilling was the number one answer. Softly hit ground ball left side. Reiners throws. Got him. Lemming grounds to third. Red Sox catcher. What was the number one answer for a Red Sox who played catcher? He was Kurt Schilling's teammate with the Red Sox in 04. Maddox Daniels, the batter, he struck out his first time up. Popped up, First foul. Now for the I would not have guessed this guy. No, he didn't. Jorge Posada only played for the Yankees. He got, in, he got into a fight with A-Rod, I think kind of a bench-clearing brawl with A-Rod one year. He did, and that would have been a correct answer. We're asking for what, the, what is the number one answer. David Ross did play for the Red Sox. 
Umpire is about to talk to Pollock. Is Carson okay? Kind of hunched over. Kind of one and two. Yeah. Played his college baseball at Georgia Tech. Was traded from the he was traded from the Mariners to the Red Sox for Heathcliff Slocum, and became one of the great catchers in Red Sox history. One and two. Got him lucky with a nice breaking ball. Two down. Strikeout number five. Shortstop Jaden Bear. Jaden Bear, the shortstop, is up. Bear grounded to short his first time. Ground ball, right side, not hard hit. Young scoops, throws, got him to retire the side. So Pollock plows through the seven, eight, nine hitters in the north field lineup. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of three and a half, north field three, Rochester two. And you're watching RTC TV four. Guys, Jason Veritek. Jason Veritek is the number one answer. Okay, Cardinals and Blue Jays. What's the number one answer? A guy who played for the St. Louis Cardinals and the Toronto Blue Jays. Sorry, Mr. Screen, we got stuck with the Cardinals again in a category. Strike. Right-handed pitcher, pitched for that 2011 Cardinals team that won the World Series. Just a a gutty, tough pitcher who had a nice long career. I think I believe he started his career with the Blue Jays, but really had his most famous days with the Cardinals. One and two. To Brady Beck, who was hit by a pitch his first time. Got him looking with a breaking ball. Striker number five. Three strikeouts in a row for Lemmy. Well, he's got his... Got in that command of the breaking ball. Cat Parker Casper's a battery grounded to third his first time. And Lemming struck out Coleman to start the game. Then he walked Pollock and hit Reinerts and Seifert with pitches. Bases loaded, one out, but he got Young in a pop up to second and got fervid on a fly ball to deep center and got out of that jam. Rochester scored two runs in the bottom of the second, both with two outs. But it looks like he's starting to get into a rhythm. Cardinals and Blue Jays, guys, number one answer. Wainwright played for only the Cardinals. But you're kind of in the neighborhood of the right answer here. This was his teammate. Popped up foul. Chris Carpenter. Chris Carpenter was the number one answer. Cardinals and Diamondbacks. You're going to get this one, Jake. He's the current first baseman for the Cardinals. Power hitter with good speed, a gold glove caliber first baseman, tremendous hitter, MVP. That's correct. Paul Goldschmidt, number one, for Cardinals and Diamondbacks. Car Diamondbacks traded him to the Cardinals, just essentially donated him to the Cardinals, as I remember. My goodness. That was an awful trade. And you're going to get this one too, Jake. Cardinals and catcher, number one answer. He just retired a couple of years ago. David Ross never played for the Cardinals. Come on, Jake. This guy was enemy number one on the north side of Chicago for about 20 years. Ground ball to short. Throw to first is in time. Cardinals and catcher, what's the number one answer? It's not Tim McCarver. It's a guy who retired two years ago with Pujols. Very famous catcher, had tattoos. Very strong throwing arm, nobody even dared run on him. He had two brothers who played in the... He's not, he's not in the Hall of Fame yet. Uh, uh, there are some people who might debate that with you, but won many, many gold gloves as a catcher. Want to know the count to Brady Coleman? I believe he caught over 2,000 games in the big leagues. That's a very select company. 
and they signed Wilson Contreras to replace him. Catcher for the Cardinals, number one answer in Immaculate Grid. 3 0. Base on balls. So if Coleman walks on four pitches, that keeps the inning alive for Carson Pollock. Well, that's not what Lemming wanted to do here. Mr. Carson Pollock. Cardinals catcher. Number one answer in Immaculate Grid. Initials are YM. That's correct, Yadier Molina. Wow, I thought that would be just a... First pitch to Pollock, outside. Okay, here's my here's my immaculate grid for today. For A's and Blue Jays, I said Dennis Lamp, 0.05%. A's and Diamondbacks, I said Mike Fetters. Strike call, throw down to second. Safe as the throw, uh, throw bounced in there. I got 11, yeah. I'm okay with it. Okay, so A's and Diamondbacks veteran middle reliever Mike Fetters, A's and catcher. I picked a guy who played for the Cubs at some point in his career. You might or might not remember him back in 07. Time called. I said Rob Bowen. Remember the Cubs traded Michael Barrett to get Rob Bowen, and then they traded Rob Bowen a month later to get Jason Kendall. Back when Lou Pinella had saw about a month of Rob Bowen and said he had had enough, I think. <laughs> Golfed in the air. Who's got it? Who's got it? Does anybody have it? The ball drops in front of the right fielder and the game is tied. What happened? Booker just put his hands up in the air and it, nobody saw the ball. That's an RBI double. Not an error. Not when you just lose it in the sun or lose it in the air or something. But a gift for Pollock, who you now is two for two with two RBIs, and we're tied at three, and that'll bring up Tanner Reinerts. Blue Jays and the Red Sox, the uh, current player I picked. Now an RBI opportunity for Reinerts. Strike. First base open, and they're going to pitch to him. Reinerts is 0 for 1. He's been hit by a pitch, and he's flown out to center. Ball, and it gets away. That'll be a wild pitch, and Pollock will move up to third. Runner at third with two outs. Red Sox and Blue Jays, I picked a current player. I picked Rob Refsnyder. Blue Jays and Diamondbacks, I picked up a guy who their White Sox just signed, like, last week. So I had him on the brain. Played in the World Series last year for the Diamondbacks. Tommy Pham. Red Sox and catcher. Ball. This guy played catcher for the Red Sox in the 80s. Basically, when Carlton Fisk left the Red Sox for the White Sox, they put this guy there, Rich Gedman. That was my high one today, 5%. Cardinals and Blue Jays. Ball pops out of Holmes' mid. It's a ball. Hanging on a third is Paul. Not that far away. Count is 3-1. and one. He was with the Cubs. They traded him to the White Sox. He later pitched for the Cardinals. He started his career with the Blue Jays. Ryan Tapera, 0.2%. Ball, and it gets away. Pollock is going to, Pollock will not score. He will not try to score. Good job by Holmes of pouncing on it, but it is a walk. First and third with two outs for Jake Cipher. I was a little bit surprised they pitched to Reinerts in the first place. Catcher Jake. Cardinals and Diamondbacks. I went with a left-handed kind of left-handed journeyman pitcher, Dennis Reyes. You might remember a portly left-hander who pitched for a whole bunch of teams, including the Cardinals and the Diamondbacks. First pitch to Cipher. 
is high. Cardinals and catcher, I picked an ex-Cub, played in the 80s and 90s, Steve Lake. He played for the Cardinals later on in his career. Steve Lake was 0.5%. I was a little bit surprised it was that high. So I got an 11 today. But Rich Gedman was 5% and Tommy Pham was 4%. So, yeah. So there we go. Count is 2-0 oh to Cypher. Let's see if Reinerts will be in the move here. He is on the move. The pitch is put in play to left center field. McKillop makes the catch. Boy, if McKillop wants it, you can just back off because he's pretty sure-handed out there. He's been good. But the Zebras do score one run in the inning. One hit. No errors and two left. End of four innings. It's Rochester three and Northfield three, and you're watching RTC TV four. Kind of reminds me of my Little League days when I would be staring off into space playing right field, never expecting the ball to be hit my way, but this is high school baseball. Come on now. First pitch ball to Pratt, who has doubled and struck out. He's one for two. Ball three. Pollock has one walk and five strikeouts so far, and there is a mound visit coming from Corey Good. This is not how you wanted to start the fifth inning. This is a Northfield team that averages about seven and a half runs a game. Walking their leadoff man and setting up the rest of their order is not how you want. Three runs, four hits, no errors for Northfield. Three runs, four hits, and I have two errors for the Zebras. Strike. And all three Northfield runs came in the third inning. They were unearned. And all after nobody on two out, and that is a base on balls, and Pratt is aboard to start the fifth. Second baseman, Wyatt Booker. Wyatt Booker, the batter. He has grounded short and reached out in that error. That is one of the pivotal plays in this game. Fall off. Pitch in the dirt, knocked down by Pollock. Connect on my cipher. Strike called. One and two. Grounder, left side. Underhand flip, second throw to first. That's a double play. What a pivot by Gavin Young. And just like that, there's nobody on and two out. That was nifty. I mean, Reinerts with kind of an underhanded flip. 
to Young, but you just thought, well, let's just make sure that you just seemed like they were just wanting to get the force out, but they got more than the force. They got the double play, and Brandon McKillop is up. Fall off. McKillop has grounded to third and reached on an infield single and scored back in the third. High one and one. High ball two. Paul taking it on a different baseball. That one can be shelved for a little while. Swing and a miss. That, a lot of late movement on that. And McKillop offered at a pitch that was veering out of the strike zone, two and two. Ground ball, second base. Wormburner booted by Young. Caleb Dubois, the freshman first baseman, is up. He struck out and walked. Ball. And Pollock trips on the mound. It's okay. Let's see if McKillop is in base stealing mode here. Strike call. Throw down. Not in time. Stolen base for McKillop. Zebra's putting a 13 game conference winning streak on the line. Popped up foul. Can Cypher locate? He can, and he makes the catch to retire the side. This has not been one of the Zebra's better defensive games. But Cypher makes a nice play there. No runs, no hits. One error, one left in the top of the fifth. At the end of four and a half, Rochester and Northfield are tied 3-3. And you're watching RTC TV4. Hoppert has two of Northfield's four hits. He singled to lead off the second, and he had a big two-out, two-run single in the third. Left-handed hitting right fielder. Who lost Pollock's fly ball in the sun later on. That was just strange. I mean, ball two. Inside, ball three. Boy, Hopper just seems to be getting a good view of Pollock's pitches. Strike one. Line drive, right center field. Hopper's three for three. Casper runs it down, gets it into Young, so it's just a single. Hopper hit that ball well. Got ahead in the count three and one. And let's see what Jared Holmes does. In the second inning, Hopper led off the inning with a single, and Holmes tried to bunt him over, and Rochester got a force out on it. It's not a good bunt, and Pollock pounced and threw to second, so he's up there to bunt again. Offered, and he's down in the count 0 and 1. Holmes a junior. And the first person you think of when you think of Northfield baseball is Tony Ugin. The job that he did in building up this program. 
Here goes the runner trying to steal. Safe. Good throw by Cypher. Young was kind of late to cover and wasn't really in, It was kind of an awkward tag. The count is now. The pitch was a ball. The count is one and one. And now what does Holmes do? They're, they're still up there to bunt. He gets it down, and it's a good bunt. Pollock picks it, throws to Brady Beck, sacrifice 1 3. Runner a third with one out for Ty Lemming. Now batting for the Norseman, pitcher Ty Lemming. Lemming is 0 for 2. He's flown out to center and he's grounded to third. Foul tip held on to by Cypher. Rochester's going to play that infield in. They don't want to give up a run for an out here, not in a tie game in the sixth inning. They want in the dirt, knocked down. Cypher can't locate it, and the run will come in and score. Wild pitch. Even if Cypher had located it immediately he might have had trouble getting Hoppert ball bounced a good deal away from to his right that is now one and one ball two and it's been a frustrating day for Jake I would imagine and the plate he got nailed with a line drive he got hit with the pitch when he was batting couldn't smother that one. Ball three. Strike. So finally for Northfield, they get the leadoff man on, and then the leadoff man comes around to score. In the dirt, base on balls. Runner at first with one out for Maddox Daniels. That's not Maddox Daniels, that's Ethan Bruce pinch hitting. Mound meaning, just between the players. Will be Ethan Bruce. Daniels was 0 for 2 with two strikeouts while he was in there. Bruce swings and misses. Mason Gillis is transferring from Purdue to Duke. You see that? 0 and 1. Fouled off. Hit by a pitch. First and second with one out. I'm going to bring him Jaden Bear, the shortstop. Bear is grounded to short and grounded to second. And Bruce was down on the count 0 and 2. Grounder to third. Stepping on the back is Reinerts. He throws to first in time for a 5-3 double play. That was big. I was just going to say, if Bear didn't, as long as Bear doesn't hit into a double play, the lineup turns over, but it, he does hit into a double play, and the side is retired. That was big. But Northfield does take the lead. They score one run, one hit, no errors, two left. End of five and a half. Northfield leads Rochester 4-3, to three, and you're watching RTC TV4. 
Again, interesting. How long will Coach Mitchell of Northfield stick with Lemming on the mound? He's got a really good one in McKillop, who's is playing center field right now, but McKillop's their ace pitcher. And if it comes down to protecting a one-run lead late, how long will he go with Lemming? Brady Beck has been hit by a pitch and struck out. He's 0 for 1. He has scored a run. Line drive to center, base hit. Brady aboard. Good start. Timeout. Corey Good's going to put in a pinch runner. It's Drew Bowers. Drew Bowers pinch running at first. The Northfield coach is saying is that number two isn't on your lineup card that you sent in. I think that's what's going on. So what do you do if you're Corey Good here? Do you have Casper Bunt or swing away? And they, they always say play play to tie at home. So I'm guessing Bunt, but we'll see. He shows Bunt. He gets it down. It's a foul ball. Casper is 0 for 2. He's grounded to third and grounded to short. Throw over to first, Bowers back. Booker shading way over toward the hole. He wants to be able to cover first if he has to. And Casper swings away and fouls it off. 0 oh and 2. Interesting. So first pitch, he bunted, 0-1, he swings away and fouls it off. Now Booker will move way over to his right. But that does leave a little bit more. Now Booker takes a couple steps to his left. 0-2. Put in play to left. It's caught out there. One down in the inning. For disease, number one, Brady Coleman. Pitching change coming. Ben Snyder coming in to pitch for Northfield. Now pitching for the Norths, number 19, Ben Snyder. Zebras will get a look at a lefty here. Well, Lemming finishes the day. He allowed five hits. 
he walked three, he hit three batters, and he struck out six. He didn't have impeccable control. But he got out of jams when he needed to. He never he had a one, two, three inning in the fifth. But the Zebras have also stranded also stranded seven runners, including the bases loaded in the first inning. Softball update, West Central leads cast in 5-3. to three. Top of the fifth. Steve Stricker's out of that one. Hope you can tune into that one. Softball update, Rochester leads Northfield 13 to nothing. bottom of the fourth. No home runs for Rochester in that softball game, but they have four doubles. Okay, Brady Coleman to face Snyder inside. Rochester saw a lefty when uh, Brett Huffman from Delphi pitched here last week, but Snyder's a different type of lefty. He's tall. He throws hard. Huffman a little more of a crafty lefty. Outside. Again, this is kind of where your travel ball, if, where if you have kids who play travel ball, I think that helps because if you have high school kids who just don't see – much left-handed pitching, but Brady plays a lot of travel ball. Same with Pollock and Reinerts. Hit him with the pitch. Off of the release point and just drilled Coleman. I think that hit him in the thigh. So Casper couldn't move the runner over, but the hit by pitch moves him over. So first and second with one out. Here's Here's the opportunity you wanted with Carson Pollock up there. Pollock, Pollock is two for two. He walked in the first, had an RBI single in the second, had an RBI double in the fourth that was lost in the sun or the air or, or something, but dropped in front of the right fielder, Pratt. First pitch strike from Snyder. Pollock wanted a timeout, doesn't get a timeout, and then the pitch is in the dirt, and the runners advance on a wild pitch. That was weird. Pollock asked for a timeout, I, and the umpire did not give him one, and I frankly, I don't think he deserved one. I mean, he asked for it real late. And um, I don't know if that distracted, did that distract the catcher or the pitcher? I don't know. Regardless, it was a wild pitch, and now the second or third with one out. All out of play, one and two. Potential go-ahead run now in scoring position, and you can pitch around Pollock with Reinerts on deck. Northfield playing the infield back. They'll trade a run for now. Got him looking with a breaking ball. Or did he? What's the count? He's out. Big, big strikeout. Now hitting for the Z's. For Ben Snyder. Reiners is intentionally walked. Now hitting catcher Jake Seifer. Bases loaded two out for Jake Seifer. Well, it's been kind of a frustrating day for Jake, but here's a chance to. A tone. 
He's been hit by a pitch, struck out, and a fly out to center on. And that wild pitch in the top half of this inning, I'm sure Jake thought he should have smothered that. That it gets in the dirt. Runners will hold. It just doesn't get far away from Holmes. Well, that was a real good yacker by Snyder to strike out Pollock. One and oh. Strike. Brady Beck single to lead off the inning. That was the first time in six innings Rochester's gotten their leadoff man on base. Ball two. He gets a little bit away from Holmes, but not far enough for the runners to try. Two and one. Two and one. That hit him. It hit him in the foot. An RBI hit by pitch, and the game is tied. Second baseman, Gavin Young. So Bauer scores. Coleman up to third. Reinert's up to second. That is the fourth hit batter in this game by Northfield pitching, plus four walks. Gavin Young's due. We're going to have another pitching change. We are, and they're going to bring in McKillop. We thought they would bring in McKillop at some point, but Coach Mitchell waited until his team had lost the lead. So here's the situation. Bases loaded, two out, bottom of the sixth. We're tied 4 4. Coach Mitchell goes with his ace here with the bases loaded. So they had the TRC Sportsmanship Seminar today at Grace College. That's always a nice thing that they do. Yeah. Chad Briscoe does a great job as the AD there at Grace College. And Interesting. I bet then, so Josh is reporting that Manchester has defeated Wabash three to nothing. Josh, because that's so that means that uh, let's see that means that Manchester is what two and zero. Oh, Wabash is one and one in the conference. Softball final: Winnemac has defeated North White eleven to nothing in five innings. Okay, time to rev it up for Gavin Young. Bases loaded, two out. First pitch, McKillop, up and in. That pitch had some steam on it. Yeah. 
He pulls him, knocked down, and he wins the race to the bag for the force out. Nice play. I think that was Maddox Daniels. Was that Daniels back in the game? Wow, he Young pulled Mikhail up, not only put it in play, but pulled him, but he grounds into a force out. Rochester scores one run in the inning. One hit. No errors, three left. End of six innings, Rochester and Northfield are tied 4-4. And you're watching RT. Carson throws him here. Pratt walked his last time up. 0-1-1. That might have gotten a piece of cipher. Foul off, count hangs at 0 and 2. Breaking ball a little high, 1 and 2. Ball 2. Northfield had to use three pitchers to get out of that inning. Went from Lemming to Snyder to McKillop. McKillop got Young on the force out with the bases loaded. Foul ball. Count hangs at 2-2. Two and two. Northfield has left 6 on base in this game, and Rochester has left 10. Liner to left, base hit. Pratt singles to lead off the top of the seventh. That will bring up Wyatt Booker. Now batting for the Norseman, second baseman, Wyatt Booker. Booker, the freshman, is 0 for 3. He's grounded to short, he's reached on an air, and he grounded into a double play. You'd have to think he's bunning here. Not a big lead by Pratt. Pitch is high. Again, I think that the base hit for Pratt was on a pitch that was high. And I th that one was high, so. Carson's, you know, when you want if that's a sign of fatigue or. Mechanics again challenges him with a high fastball, swing and a miss, one and one. Manchester beat Wabash today 3 to nothing. Manchester will be here on Wednesday. If that Martin Novitz pitched for Manchester against Wabash today, that means he doesn't pitch here on Wednesday. So He bunts. It's a good bunt. Pollock to Brady Beck for the out. Sacrifice 1-3. Runner at second with one out. Brandon McKillop, the batter. He's the pitcher. Started the game in center. He's grounded a third. Reach on an infield single. Reach on an air. One for three. Yes, score to run. Wild pitch. And that's big because now that'll put a runner a third with one out. Now the infield has to play in. Grounder up over the mound, base hit, and Northfield takes the lead. Casper misses that out in center field, but McKillop will hang on at first, so this is his game to win now, and he just put himself ahead with an RBI single. Caleb yeah, that'll bring up Caleb Dubois, who has he struck out, walked, and fouled to the catcher. Nice play by Cypher back in the fifth. To Foul off. 5 4 Northfield, top of the seventh.
Seven hits for Northfield in this game. Strike, throw down to second. Save. Stolen base for McKillop. The count is 0-2. Line drive to center. Casper going back. Can he get there? No, he doesn't. McKillop was heading back to the bag. He'll move up to third, and they missed the cutoff, man. He can only get to third. It is a double for Du Bois. Second and third with one out for Corbin Hoppert, who has been a menace to the Zebras. He's three for three. Three singles, and Hopper does receive an intentional walk here. Bases loaded, one out for Jared Holmes. Holmes has grunted into a force out, struck out, and he laid on a sacrifice bun his last time up, 0 for 2. High for a ball. Of course, the risk when you walk Hopper is now the bases are loaded, so he's got to throw strikes. Grounder back to the mount, off the glove, throw back to the plate. Safe. Six to four now. Base is still loaded. Is that Lemming? Is he still up there? Or? Number six is up. We don't have a number six on the program. Pitch is outside. Swing and a miss. Well, again, you just have to fo the the focus part becomes really hard here. You've given up two runs, but you've got to bear down here. Two and one. Ball three. Pollock has five strikeouts in this game, but he hasn't struck anybody out since the fourth inning. He's not, not fooling the batters now. And when they've had to lay down bunts, they've been able to. Strike call, three and two. Got him looking. Strike at number six. Big job by Pollock there. He was down on the count, three and one, came back to strike him out. Maddox Daniels is due. Corey Goods headed out to the mound. We're going to have a pitching change. Let's see who's coming in. Is that Casper? Now pitching for the Z's. 
will be Parker Casper. Okay, so here's what we think is happening. Casper is going to come in from center field to pitcher. Pollock is going from pitcher to shortstop. Coleman's going from shortstop to second base. Young is going from second base to left field. Furbita going from left field to center field. I think we got him. I've been sitting in this chair the whole time. 6-4 Northfield, top of the seventh. Bases loaded two out. Maddox Daniels is uh, 0 for 2. He struck out both times. He got pinch hit for by Ethan Bruce. Last inning, Bruce got hit by a pitch. Now Daniels is back in there. Strike. If you're looking ahead to the bottom of the seventh, be Fervita, Brant Beck, and Brady Beck. 0-2. And I think we mentioned Parker Casper is unfazed, quote unquote, according to Corey Good. He can come in and pitch in almost any situation. 0 and 2. Nice dig by Cypher. That's the thing. You get ahead in the count 0 and 2, and you feel like you can waste one, and then you end up throwing it in the dirt. Nice dig, though, by Cypher. 1 and 2. Two and two. And Brady Coleman, but equally adept at shortstop or second base. To right center field. And Fervida can catch it. This will score at least two runs. And going from first to third on the play is Holmes. A two run single for Maddox Daniels. And Northfield now leads eight to four. Holmes from first to third on the play. Du Bois and Hopper score. Let's bring up Jaden Bear. Grounder left side. Pollock charges. Pollock throws. Safe run scores. RBI infield single for Bear. Five runs in in the inning. Right fielder, Cameron Pratt. Cameron Pratt led off this inning with a single. And he hits a second hit of the inning. That's a base hit to right. Brand Beck hits the cutoff, man. Everybody advances one base. Daniels at third, Bear at second. A little ring up Wyatt Booker. He's the 11th man to bat in the inning. He laid on a sacrifice bun earlier in the inning. 0 for 3 in the day. So Casper comes in. He gets ahead in the count 0 and 2 on Daniels, and Daniels got him for a two run single, and now two more hits. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Got him to retire the side. But it's going to take a rally for the Zebras. 
Northfield scores five runs on six hits in the inning. No errors and three left. End of six and a half. It's Northfield nine and Rochester four, and you're watching RTC TV four. Softball update, West Central leads cast in 6-3, to three, top of the 7th. Softball update, Rochester has defeated Northfield 14 to nothing in five innings. So, the Ladies' Yees are 1-1 one one in the conference. <coughs> and the baseball team is also about to be 1-1 one one in the conference unless they come up with a big rally here. Fervita 0 for 3 so far. Popped up, foul, playable. Well, Bucher can't get there. It looked like Bucher called off the first baseman, and then, but he couldn't get it. One and one, the count. Zebras with five hits. They've walked four times, and they've been hit by pitches four times. But it should be noted that Northfield hasn't committed an error in this game. Swing and a miss. First of three games this week for the Zebras. They are home with Manchester on Wednesday, as we mentioned earlier, and they are at Carroll on Friday. The Cougars. Ball two. Again, McKillop, he's got great stuff, but he's walked 16 and in 16 innings. Ball three. Got him, fastball. Beck, the battery is 0 for 3. He's flown out to center and struck out twice. In Northfield, after losing at Wabash last Wednesday, it probably felt like they needed this one. Strike two call. And got off to a rough start in this one. They were down two to nothing. It was almost like the momentum of the game changed in the top of the third inning after nobody on and two out, and they scratched out three runs. Got him swinging. Bring it Brady back. Again, I, I know the Peru was pretty impressive when they played the Zebras earlier in the year. Northfield goes to Peru on Wednesday. I'm guessing Coach Mitchell wanted to save McKilla for the Peru game, but didn't really have a choice here. Wave and a miss and a breaking ball by Brady Beck, who single last time. Oh, Drew Bowers came in and ran for him and scored. Brady is 1-4-2 in this game. Swing and a miss. Well, McKillop's just a power pitcher, just a Kind of a loose, lanky arm. 
high for a ball. Got him swinging, and that'll do it. The Northfield Norsemen have ended Rochester's conference winning streak that goes back nearly two full years. For Rochester in the bottom of the seventh, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Final score, Northfield nine and Rochester four. Both teams are now one and one in the conference. And we will be, we're going to take a break here for, uh, we can t calculate the stats and we will be right back here on RTC.